So here are some final words of advice before you go in for your exam. The whole question. Don't just go straight for those dotted lines. I call it dotted line fever. When you're in an exam, you just want to get on with it and you're looking straight for those dotted lines. What's the next thing I'm going to have to do? What's the next thing I'm going to do? Read the information first. You're going to get a whole page sometimes with a graph, you know, table of results uh, and some information. And you've really got to understand all that stuff first before you look at the questions. You've got to force yourself to, to read it through once or twice, underline the keywords. Uh, then actually the questions will be much easier. If you read the question bit first and then go back, actually you're going to be looking for information that might not even be there. Um, and that is, that's unhelpful. So try and force yourself to read the question properly first. The command words are really key. Some people lose easy marks because they haven't quite read the question carefully. Um, describe means does it go up, does it go down, uh, does it go up really fast, then level off. Just say what the pattern is. Sometimes there's two lines on the graph and you need to be able to sort of compare them. One goes up very fast, the one doesn't go up quite as fast. Uh, one suddenly overtakes the other one. At what point does that happen? So uh, quote some data to support your descriptions. Explain is where you've actually then got to use your biology, you've actually got to say why. Why does it go up? Why does it go down? Why does it level off? Use your biology and your explanations. Suggest, suggest questions are hard and there's more and more of them in the exam, uh, but you've got to be able to actually apply your knowledge. So a suggest means you haven't been taught this directly, but what you do know, you should be able to use to, to explain what's gone on here. Okay, uh, so sometimes people overcomplicate that. Try and just put the obvious things down first, at least. Calculate, there's more and more maths these days in the biology exams. Um, calculations though are usually e relatively easy and short, then we saw two marks. Um, show you're working, make sure you put units in, make sure you um, answer to whatever it tells you to do, the nearest whole number, for example, because quite often people don't do that and again, lose easy marks. If you don't like maths, don't get hung up on those questions. They're not worth, you know, each one's only worth a couple of marks. So um, you could always come back to that later on in the exam. Discuss means you must show both sides of the argument. You must say a couple of points for and a couple of points against. Okay, uh, reasons that are good, reasons that are bad. That's what a discussion is. You've got to be able to do that. Evaluate, a lot more evaluation again in the exams. Quite often talking about evaluating a, an experiment or maybe somebody's conclusion from some experimental data. And there you've got to look at the data and say, yeah, the data backs up the conclusion that they're making because of this, this, and this. Um, however, you also need to be able to evaluate the experiment itself and say, yeah, but they only repeated it once, so it's not very reliable. They didn't, uh, there was errors because they didn't control the pH, for example. So look at and think about the actual information you've been given on the experiment and whether that allows them to make such a valid conclusion or not. Okay, so that's evaluation skills. Write in bullet points. You don't need to write long, full sentences. Do not waste time repeating, writing out the question. Okay, just get straight to the answer, write it in bullet points and keep it short and snappy and use as much keyword terminology as you possibly can. If you look at the mark scheme, all they're looking for is those key terms and the marker is going to have a lot of papers to mark. So they want you want to make it easy for them. Don't make them going looking for that information by surrounding it with lots of waffle. Just keep it straight and to the point. Don't rush. In IGC Biology Paper 1, you've got two hours for 110 marks. That should be plenty of time. So this is what I was saying about reading the question fully, reading it a couple of times, thinking more carefully about how you're going to answer the question before you do it. Because again, you don't need to write that much. You can write in short bullet points. So take more time to plan your answers carefully and to think about the terminology that you're going to use. Uh, and uh, so pace yourself throughout the exam as best as you possibly can. Check back for any silly mistakes. Again, the amount of times people make silly mistakes from not reading the question carefully, you know, um, it may ask you to put ticks and crosses in the boxes in a table and you've put in yeses or noes, things like that. Silly things that can lose you marks, which normally you would get. So take time to check back if you have spare time at the end. There are sort of loads of key different themes that come up in biology, but these are just a couple of things that I've kind of noticed that it's, I think it's important to really bear in mind. Temperature comes up a lot, but when we really talk about temperature and biology, really what we're talking about is enzymes, and it's making that link. If you make that link between temp temperature and enzymes, then you're bound to get a good few marks there. Um, again, oxygen comes up, you know, why does this organism need oxygen, or this person needs oxygen, or why when you increase um, exercise rate, 
Uh, does breathing rate go up? Well, it's about, again, making links. Oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration, which is needed for energy, which is then probably needed in that, that case for muscles. So try and make, draw the links together. You know, plant roots, why do they need oxygen? Oxygen is for respiration, to give energy, to give active transport to absorb, absorb the minerals. So joining the dots and making those links. Oxygen is for respiration, is for energy. Water, again, link it, is always to do really with osmosis. Adaptations is a key theme. You know, adaptations of the villi, adaptations of red blood cells, adaptation of capillaries, adaptations of uh, the leaves for gases exchange, for photosynthesis, these kind of things. And when you do adaptations, again, what is the feature? Really sure, this is the feature, and this is how it helps. Broadleaf, catch a more light. Microvilli, large surface area. Okay, and then experiments. There's going to be a, quite a lot of questions on experiments. On the, the there's nine that you need to know for paper one. You should make really clear on your variables, independent variable, the thing that you change, dependent variable, the thing that you measure, and the control variables, things you keep the same. And think about reliability. Reliability is always down to repeats. Okay, the more you repeat the experiment, the more reliable it is. And be confident. You've worked hard. You prepared hard. Um, you've you've done lots of revision. Hopefully, um, you know there will be questions that throw you. There will be hard questions. There will be stri strange questions sometimes. Uh, that you won't have been able to prepare for but you can't let that throw you in the exam you've got to maintain your confidence and uh, belief in your own knowledge um, because that, that's what will help make you you know drive through and get some decent grades at the end of it so those are my final words of advice and brief tips i hope you find them useful and good luck in your exams